This video topic was requested by my patron, Landon Bowers. If you would like to become a patron and have your video request prioritized, link down below. If they truly are a troll or an unreasonable person, you'll see that in the conversation. You don't need to go into the conversation thinking that's going to happen. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry and today we're going to talk about giving feedback. So when it comes to running role plays, there are two main times that I give feedback. The first is during the application process. So for example, somebody will submit an application and maybe it's not something that we can accept, so we'll give them notes on that application and encourage them to try again and take those notes into account. More information on this process on my RP Group Applications video, which I will link up in the card if you'd like to hear more about that as its whole thing. I also give feedback when handling rule breakers, or maybe someone that's not really breaking a rule per se, but some behavior that they're doing is causing social friction within the group, or something that they're doing is breaking the story of the roleplay, because in my roleplays, story is king. And if you remember from my How to Handle Rule Breakers video, my first line of defense when it comes to rule breakers is to have a conversation. I'll talk to the person about what's going on, I might ask for a behavior change, I might ask them why they're doing the behavior in the first place. It all kind of depends on what exactly the situation is, but often, sometime during that conversation, I'm going to be giving them feedback. So those are the two times pretty much that in role play, I am giving some kind of feedback in a conversation with one of my players. And in this video, we're going to discuss some methods for giving feedback that I have found works well in role plays. Now, none of this is going to be new information, especially if you have done communication style like corporate training and things like that before. It's all that same type of stuff, but we're going to take those tips that I particularly like and apply them to role play. So if you want more information on that kind of stuff, that's the sort of thing you'll want to Google to get more of these types of tips. All right, so we've got 10 tips on giving feedback in role plays. The first tip is be friendly. This is a role play group. It's not a job and it's not a customer service situation. We are all getting together to play pretend. That means the people that you're role playing with are your friends and acquaintances. So treat them like that. Don't go all customer service on them and also don't act like you're their boss. You are neither of those things. You are their friend. You are their teammate who both have a goal of having a good story and a good role play together. This must be the undertone of the whole conversation or you're not going to accomplish anything collaborative. All right, tip number two, check your motives. Why do you want to give this feedback? Is it something that's a pet peeve of yours or is it something that actually needs to happen for the role play as a whole? I'll give an example. Say you get an application for your vampire role play of a few thousand year old vampire. In the character's history in the application, it says their vampire was turned during the time that the Roman Empire controlled Britain, but in their application, it says England and not Britain. So before you give feedback about the small inaccuracy in the name, think to yourself, does this actually matter for the roleplay? If the roleplay is in present day, small historical inaccuracies don't matter. We all know what they meant. It's okay if they're using a different name for the area that was okay in different time periods than what we're talking about in that application. It's the same area. We get it. So before you give feedback, always check your motives. It's possible your feedback isn't even necessary. Tip number three, assume the best. Always go into these conversations assuming the best of the person that you're giving feedback to. If they truly are a troll or an unreasonable person, you'll see that in the conversation. You don't need to go into the conversation thinking that's going to happen. There's no need to assume malicious intent when what's far more likely is ignorance of the behavior or action that you're wanting to give them feedback on. Even if it's the third, fourth, fifth time you've talked to someone, resist the urge of going in and assuming negative things. Sometimes people need to hear things multiple times for it to stick. The average person needs to be exposed to a piece of information six times before they commit it to memory. And that's on average. I have personally seen people come into my games with horrible attitudes based on experiences they had in previous games. And it took a few conversations, but I have actually seen those players turn things around when they realize my game is not that previous game that they had such an awful experience in. 
In these situations, I'm not in their head, so all I see is I've had multiple conversations with this person about this same thing, and then just all of a sudden, like a switch, their behavior changes and they act normal and cool. And you never know when that turnaround's gonna happen, so always assume the best. Tip number four, keep it private. Feedback that's not a big deal or just a quick statement can be delivered publicly, but vast majority of feedback should be delivered privately. Shame is an absolutely effective tool in changing behavior, but all it does is change the outward behavior. It doesn't help people internalize it or understand why they need to make the behavior change. So what that means is if you're utilizing shame, as soon as you're not looking, they're gonna go right back to the old behavior. And what that's gonna mean potentially for your game is they're building up resentment and guilt from having to put this thing on that they don't understand in front of you and the other mods, and it's potentially gonna spill over into something really, really toxic later. So don't embarrass your players. Keep things private. Tip number five, emphasize facts, not feelings. Make sure you're spending more time on the facts of the situation than you are on the feelings of the people involved. Now, I'm not saying neglect feelings. This is a social collaborative space, so feelings have to be addressed. You as the admin have to understand, not all feelings are valid. People bring in their baggage from other games, from their regular life, from their jobs, from their family. So when feelings are expressed, address them, but always try to bring the conversation back to the land of facts. Don't let players spend a ton of time talking about the why of the situation. Yes, it is really important to understand someone's reasons or excuses for doing something, but once you understand them, move on. For example, let's say two players are having a disagreement and one reveals that the reason they're acting so hostile is because the other player reminds them of someone they roleplayed with in the past and had a really bad experience with. In that situation, you might say something like this. I understand this player reminds you of someone who really hurt you in a previous RP, but this person is not that person and you're not being fair to them by calling out red flags for them just being themselves. This addresses the feeling, but still brings the conversation back to the land of facts. Tip number six, make it a two-way conversation. Make sure you as the admin or moderator are not dominating the conversation. Ask questions, provide space for the player to explain. Confirm their understanding when you do speak. Ask them what they think is best in the situation before you provide what you think is best. And above all, think about how you would want your thoughts and feelings considered if you were on the other end of the conversation, and act accordingly. Remember, you are not their boss. Also, they are not your customer. You guys are friends and acquaintances, so speak to them like that. Tip number seven, praise when there's an opportunity to do so. So with this, people can smell bullcrap coming from a mile away, so I'm not a fan of things like the compliment sandwich or finding something to praise when there's nothing praiseworthy. But for example, when you're giving feedback on an application that you received, if there's things you really liked in that application, make sure to point them out. Behavior that is praised is behavior that is repeated. So if you see something you like, point it out. Tell people thank you. Tell them when they're doing a good job. Tip. Number eight, focus on the fix. During this whole conversation, you might need to talk about lots of different things, but you should always be driving towards a fix. Eventually, the conversation must be about whatever the solution is and how you're gonna implement that solution. At the end of the day, we're all people and we all make mistakes, but a great talent that people have is coming together to find a collaborative solution despite our disagreements. So use that power of collaboration to make sure the conversation is always going back to what you and the player are going to do to fix whatever the problem is. Tip number nine, end the conversation with clear next steps. Because you're focusing on the fix at the end of the conversation, there should be clear action items. In the case of an application, maybe the player is gonna resubmit or maybe it's just a small change that you're gonna go make for them. In the case of rule breaking or requesting a behavior change, maybe the person is gonna do something specific to implement that behavior change, or maybe you've agreed to give them a gentle nudge when you see that behavior happening again to remind them. Or maybe in extreme cases, there's some kind of apology that's owed to another player. Whatever the situation, make sure that at the end of the conversation, everyone knows what it is they're supposed to go do after that conversation. And then finally, tip number 10, follow up. 
This isn't always necessary, but sometimes you're going to need to follow up on those action items. Make sure, for example, if you talk to someone about an issue that you've already talked about previously, that you reference that previous conversation. Make sure what is supposed to happen actually happens. It's one thing to say you'll do something, it's a totally different thing to actually go do it. This can happen by having a follow-up conversation, maybe requesting screenshots, maybe reaching out to others that were involved to make sure that those follow-up things happen to their satisfaction. Whatever the situation, if you need to follow up, make sure you do it. Okay, so those are my 10 tips for giving feedback. I've listed them all up here on the screen so you can reference them all together. So did you find a new tip in today's video that you hadn't heard before that you can go apply? Or was this stuff all old news to you and maybe you've got an additional tip that you think I should have shared? Either way, let me know down below and don't forget to make it a great day.